Welcome back to Army Showcases, where I finally find a use for 30 years of collecting Warhammer. I've got so many of these I could do, I haven't even made a dent in the collection. Anyway, with the new Custodes book imminent, I thought I'd break out my old Custodes army, and yeah, old is definitely the word here. This is an army I built in 2018, and as you've probably noticed by now, they're not based on Games Workshop's ubiquitous plastic Custodes range. Instead, the base models for this army are sci-fi Roman legionnaires by Cyborg Miniatures, which for a long time were one of the standard ways to get Custodes models. I have a video that goes into more depth on the history of the Custodes in the game, but in brief, between Games Workshop solidifying the design of the Custodes in around 2004 and actually releasing some plastic models in 2016, a few different third-party miniatures companies released proxy model ranges. I picked up a squad of five of these guys at a convention years back, but then when Games Workshop finally released their own plastic range in 2016, a lot of stores liquidated their stock of those old cyborg sculpts, and I was lucky enough to stumble on a series of eBay auctions where I managed to bag a ton of different cyborg models on the cheap, enough to build an army. The base models are therefore cyborg science fiction Roman legionnaires with cyborg science fiction helmets and mostly modern Games Workshop weapons so they work for what you see is what you get. But there are a load of other conversions in there so let's go through the army. First up, I have two five-man squads of basic Custodian Guard. These are built from Cyborg, bodies, arms and helmets, and then Games Workshop Custodes, Guardian Spears and Sentinel Blades. Their shields are from the Cyborg kit too. The first thing you notice about these is that they're a lot bulkier sculpts. They're the same height as Games Workshop Custodians, but the robes really fill them out. Also, their shoulder pads are from the Cyborg Spartan range, which are slightly smaller in proportion. I felt the standard ones that came with the Roman kits were just a bit too huge. They're supported by five Sagittarum Guard. These are the same bodies, but combined with the Forge World Sagittarum Guard upgrade kit, which went together really easily, and they've got the full-size pauldrons this time to make them stand out a bit more and maybe compensate for their flat heads. I've then got two squads of Terminator models. I use these as Alaris Terminators, and they're based on the Cyborg Roman equivalent called Praetorian Guard. All of the Praetorian Guard came with bare heads, so I dremeled them all out and replaced them with some spare Forge World Emperor's Children helmets, which look pretty similar. One squad is armed with Games Workshop Guardian Spears, and the other are armed with the Cyborg versions, which I've cut down and modified to represent Castell and Axes. Both units then have replacement shoulder pads from Anvil Industries, just to make them look a bit more like the Cataphracti armor they're meant to represent. The army is led by two shield captains. The one in power armor is armed with a Castellan axe and carries a dagger too, which I sometimes use as a relic weapon. The one in Terminator armor is actually a Lion Knight, Cyborg's equivalent to Dark Angels, with the same conversions as all the other Alaris Terminators. His robes make him a bit easier to pick out on the battlefield. They're also accompanied by a Vexillarius, carrying the standard Games Workshop Custodes icon and armed with a Guardian Spear. Right, onto the vehicles. There's only two, and the first is this, my Dreadnought. Another eBay bargain, this is a cyborg Roman cruiser suit, which I've, well, heavily modified. I've drilled out the pilot and replaced him with a Games Workshop venerable Dreadnought sarcophagus, replacing the head inside with a grey knight head, replacing both arms with Dreadnought arms, and then reattaching the original cruiser suit's power fist. Again, it's a really nice chunky model, those robes really fill it out, and it stands about the same height as a normal plastic Contemptor. Finally, the only tank in the army so far is this Land Raider, embellished with some cyborg Roman accessory panels. This model's a rescue, the Laz Cannons have been lost over the years, so I replaced them with these classic Laz Cannons from the original Rogue Trader Land Raider kit to give it the look of a relic ancient vehicle. As per usual for me, the whole army was painted as one big batch over the course of a month, with the intention being to get them all done to a tabletop standard as quickly as possible. I mean, that's one of the points of Custodes, right? They're easy to paint. With that in mind, I primed the whole army white and then sprayed it with Montana Copper Chrome as the base coat. I then gave them Zenithal highlights with Games Workshop Retributor armor, and finally Vallejo Model Air Gold, which is the majority of that antique gold color visible on them. Finally, the gold was dry brushed with Games Workshop Gold and Griffin. I then just went through and picked out all the silver bits in Vallejo Steel, the power weapons and robes in Ultramarines Blue, and any other bits and pieces in Minotaur Coal or Vallejo Gunmetal. And then from that point, airbrushed up the robes and power weapons with a succession of paler blue colours. After this, the whole army was gloss varnished and given an all-over oil wash of lamp black, which was then removed from all the raised areas with cosmetic tips before basing on standard Games Workshop Sector Imperialis bases, and a final coat of satin varnish. In this case, Games Workshop Munitorum varnish, so they're not as flat as a lot of my other armies. And there they are. It's only a little army, but I like it. Also, Custodes are not something you necessarily need a big army of. 
It's also one of those examples of an army that's really obviously a 40k army, despite being entirely constructed out of third party models. You almost have to look twice to realize, which is exactly the sort of counts as I like. I'm going to expand it at some point. I've got some more bodies in the bag, some more forge world bits like the pyrite and adracite spears, and some ideas for how I could convert more of those bigger guys into Aqualon Terminators. But for now, it's ready to return to the battlefield. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, well, there's another one coming up just there on the right. Otherwise, check out the channel. I've got a few more army showcases and lots of videos on the history and background of 40k. See you next time.